Hi, friends. I am Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. Each month we read all four books. So go ahead and subscribe today. Join us as we keep reading the Gospels together. As we finish up the book of Mark and this month's reading plan today, I'd appreciate it so much if you would take a second to rate and review the show. Share it on social media. Invite your friends to join us in December, all the things. We dive straight into December tomorrow, reading from the New American Standard Bible or the NASB. And this will be our first time going through that version. And we're going to start with the book of John and end with Luke, starting with my three favorite chapters and ending with Luke that tells the story of Jesus' birth so beautifully. It's exactly the way we wanted to end this year of reading the Gospels together. Make sure you've got your December reading plan and your Let's Read the Gospels guidebook over at AnnieFDowns.com slash Gospels. Okay, so here is how this works. I'll read the final three chapters to you today. You can listen or read along in your own Bible, and then I'll pray, and that's it. And again today, this practice that I have loved this month, we get to ask the question, what am I most thankful for about Jesus in today's reading? If you've been working in the guidebook and you have filled out that page of what you've been thankful for with Jesus every day and you want to share it online, we would love to see it. It's totally fine if it's private and personal, no big deal. But if you want to share it, will you tag Let's Read the Gospels and tag me, Annie F. Downs? We would love to see as we are ending this month, we would love to see what you have been most thankful for about Jesus this month. So today is November 30th, and I'll be reading Mark chapters 14 through 16. And this month, I'm reading from the CSB. Mark 14. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a cunning way to arrest Jesus and kill him. Not during the festival, they said, so that there won't be a riot among the people. While he was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured it on his head. But some were expressing indignation to one another. Why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they began to scold her. Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a noble thing for me. You always have the poor with you, and you can do what is good for them whenever you want, but you do not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body in advance for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. And when they heard this, they were glad and promised to give him money. So he started looking for a good opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and prepare the Passover so that you may eat it? So he sent two of his disciples and told them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Wherever he enters, tell the owner of the house. The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. So the disciples went out, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining and eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, the one who is dipping bread in the bowl with me. For the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. As they were eating, he took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will fall away, because it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter told him, Even if everyone falls away, I will not. 
Truly, I tell you, Jesus said to him, today, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he kept insisting, if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And they all said the same thing. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he told his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. He said to them, I am deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake. He went a little farther, fell to the ground, and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Couldn't you stay awake one hour? Stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once again, he went away and prayed, saying the same thing. And again, he came and found them sleeping because they could not keep their eyes open. They did not know what to say to him. Then he came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The time has come. See, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. See, my betrayer is near. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, suddenly arrived. With him was a mob with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had given them a signal. The one I kiss, he said. He's the one. Arrest him and take him away under guard. So when he came, immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. They took hold of him and arrested him. One of those who stood by drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a criminal to capture me? Every day I was among you teaching in the temple and you didn't arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then they all deserted him and ran away. Now a certain young man wearing nothing but a linen cloth was following him. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth behind and ran away naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes assembled. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the high priest's courtyard. He was sitting with the servants, warming himself by the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they could not find any. For many were giving false testimony against him, and the testimonies did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, stating, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days I will build another not made by hands. Yet their testimony did not agree even on this. Then the high priest stood up before them all and questioned Jesus, Don't you have an answer to what these men are testifying against you? But he kept silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest questioned him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your decision? They all condemned him as deserving death. Then some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to beat him, saying, Prophesy. The temple servants also took him and slapped him. While Peter was in the courtyard below, one of the high priest's maidservants came. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about. Then he went out to the entryway, and a rooster crowed. When the maidservant saw him again, she began to tell those standing nearby, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing there said to Peter again, You certainly are one of them, since you're also Galilean. Then he started to curse and swear, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately a rooster crowed a second time, and Peter remembered when Jesus had spoken the word to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Mark 15. As soon as it was morning, having held a meeting with the elders, scribes, and the whole Sanhedrin, the chief priests tied Jesus up, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. And the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate questioned him again, Aren't you going to answer? Look how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still did not answer, and so Pilate was amazed. At the festival, Pilate used to release for the people a prisoner whom they requested. There was one named Barabbas who was in prison with rebels who had committed murder during the rebellion. The crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do for them as was his custom. 
Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? For he knew it was because of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he would release Barabbas to them instead. Pilate asked them again, Then what do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? Again they shouted, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What has he done wrong? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them, and after having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away into the palace, that is, the governor's residence, and called the whole company together. They dressed him in a purple robe, twisted together a crown of thorns, and put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! They were hitting him on the head with a stick and spitting on him. Getting down on their knees, they were paying him homage. After they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple robe and put his clothes on him. They led him out to crucify him. They forced a man coming in from the country who was passing by to carry Jesus' cross. He was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes, casting lots for them to decide what each would get. Now it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge written against him was, The King of the Jews. They crucified two criminals with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by were yelling insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! The one who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests with the scribes were mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross so that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, limo sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, See, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, fixed it on a stick, offered him a drink, and said, Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus let out a loud cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who was standing opposite him, saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women followed him and took care of him. Many other women had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, because it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the Sanhedrin, who was himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, came and boldly went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had already died. When he found out from the centurion, he gave the corpse to Joseph. After he bought some linen cloth, Joseph took him down and wrapped him in the linen. Then he laid him in a tomb cut out of the rock and rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching where he was laid. Mark 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb at sunrise. They were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone from the entrance to the tomb for us? Looking up, they noticed that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he told them. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they put him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. They went out and ran from the tomb, because trembling and astonishment overwhelmed them. And they said nothing to anyone, since they were afraid. Early on the first day of the week, after he had risen, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him as they were mourning and weeping. Yet when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe it. After this, he appeared in a different form to two of them, walking on their way into the country. And they went and reported it to the rest who did not believe them either. 
Later, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who saw him after he had risen. Then he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes. If they should drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. So the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the accompanying signs. That is Mark chapters 14 through 16, the end of the book of Mark in the CSB. Let's pray together. Jesus, as we finish out this month of being real thoughtful about what we're thankful for, um, where else would we end but being thankful that you resurrected? Thank you that death did not have its final say in your life, which means it does not have its final say in our lives either. Thank you that you defeated hell and death just in, in that one decision to sacrifice your life for us and then to resurrect again. Thank you that that is how we have abundant life now and eternal life forever. Thank you that you proved what we knew was true is that you are who you say you are. And thank you that you're still alive today. No other religion can worship a God that is living, just us. And so I'm so thankful, Jesus. I'm so thankful you're alive. You are alive. So we are really grateful for you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.